Jesus Christ, the King and our God, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have 
kindness, save us, and mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in all glory to Christ our God. But deliver us from all that might ensnare our souls. For to you, Lord, O Lord, our eyes are turned in, and you we hope. Let us not be put to shame, O our God. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is to our glory, honor, and worship, now and ever and forever. Amen. Blessed is the man, Alleluia, who has not Thank you. 
were thrown down by the side of the rock. Then they understood that my words were kind. And they also were standing pieces on the ground. So they rose the spirit of the mountain of the grave. To you, Lord God, my eyes are turned. In you I take refuge, spare my soul. From the ground, here, wait for me, keep me safe. Keep me from the snares of those who do me love. Let the wicked fall into the traps they have set. While I pursue my way unharmed. With all my voice I cry to the Lord. With all my voice I entreat the Lord. I pour out my trouble before him. I tell him all my distress. While my spirit faints within me. Resurrection to the world. Let the 
watchmen count on daybreak and his riot on the Lord. Let us praise the word without beginning and co eternal with the Father. For our sake he was born of the Virgin. He freely accepted the cross and and rose in glory. Therefore let us sing to him, glory to you, O Lord, the giver of life and Savior of our souls. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption, Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. From infancy your life was consecrated to Christ our Lord and God. Strengthened by him you submitted the lower to the higher, the bodily passions to the spirit. Oh, bless Blessed Olympian, sentry the Lord, to grant our souls peace and great mercy. Praise the Lord, all you nations, acclaim him, all you peoples, as a great luminary, you enlighten the whole world with a splendor. received by the unsetting light, entreated to grant our souls peace and great mercy. Strong is the love of the Lord for us, he is faithful forever. And if yes, you were truly a pilgrim once, as you dwelt upon a Afflicted by hunger, heat, and cold, thus you receive from the Spirit your divine charism for healing melodies and putting passions to fly. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us praise the Virgin Mary, the glory of the whole world. For no man she bore the Master, she is the gate of heaven, the song of angels and the adornment of Dividing wall of enmity, bringing peace and opening the kingdom. If we cling to her, then as an anchor of faith, the Lord born of her will be our champion. Take courage, then take courage, people of God. For he who is all powerful will fight our enemies. Wisdom be attentive, O joyful light of the holy glory of the Father immortal, the heavenly host.
Such deeds are condemned, they are seen in the light of day, and all that then appears is light. That is why we read, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Keep careful watch over your conduct. Do not act like fools, but like thoughtful men. Make the most of the present opportunity, for these are evil days. Do not continue in ignorance, but try to discern the will of the Lord. Avoid getting drunk on wine that leads to debauchery. Be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and inspired songs. Sing praise to the Lord with all your heart. Peace be to your reader, our wisdom be attentive. Has 
given great victories to his king and has shown love for David his anointed and his descendants forever. Amen. about 
the man possessed by legion and the power of a name and how legion wouldn't allow the man to speak his own name, answer his name because, and he answered legion himself, thus dehumanizing the man. Have you taken away someone's name away and you're dehumanizing it? That's what the Nazis did, right? They dehumanized it by giving everybody numbers. Would not use your name. You had no meaning, no value. You were just a thing to be done away with or what done with whatever you please. There's the other aspect that we hear in our gospel today. Jesus is teaching in a synagogue. It's probably a lot of people. He was pretty famous by then. Everyone's coming to hear him and hoping to catch the sight of one of his miracles, I'm sure. But in this multitude of people in this synagogue, it says, he saw this woman. He saw her. Now, there was a lot of other women, I'm sure, there. And all probably others had had problems as well. But he saw her. He saw who she really was. Jesus will do this a number of times when healing. The most, the one that comes to mind would be the healing of a paralytic with a withered arm, or the paralytic on the mat, or the one with the withered arm. Two different cases that I can think of right off the top of my head. When Jesus sees them, and he heals them. But then, he knows the thoughts of others. In other words, he can see the hearts of the leaders that were trying to put Jesus down, trying to take credit away from him, trying to admonish Jesus in their own hearts, and he could see that as well. The simple thing I want to bring home tonight is the fact that this Jesus who can see the hearts of men is right this very moment seen into your heart. You see, in our hearts, our duplicity. You see, in our hearts, how hypocritical we can be. But he also is seeing the capacity that you have to be loving and kind and merciful. Right at this very moment, each and every one of us are being seen for who we really are. Not the mask we try to put on to fool God and fool our neighbor, but the real you, the real me. The one, as it says in Revelation, is that he calls us by a name only he knows for each and every one of us. So if we keep this in mind, that we have this moment, this glance, this eye contact with him in our soul, our noose is actually continuous. Then one, it's going to keep us on the straight and narrow because we know, well, he sees us as the Christmas song carol is. He sees you one, you're not in. He sees you and you're nice. When he sees you and you're not, you don't realize you're being seen. But more importantly, and, and that kind of motivation isn't a healthy motivation. More importantly, I am aware that I am being seen. I am aware that I am being seen, not from someone who's up there judging me with the hammer, but someone who loves me so much that just wants to share that love with me and wants me to experience that love. I see you. That famous line in that one sci-fi movie, right? Probably the best line, one of the best lines of a movie. Is when on when you're not in Kansas anymore, but you're on Pandora. And the things that they would say, the one thing that the natives on that planet would say is, I see you. Of course, that wasn't invented for that movie. That's been going on for centuries. To say, I see you. I see the real you. I see the authentic you. 
I acknowledge you as having existence. I acknowledge you as having value. And I acknowledge you as having purpose. And in that acknowledgement, there's acceptance. That's one of the things when I did my hospital ministry, I found the most um, fulfilling is when I would go to the hospitals and I'd go to the rooms, and especially the ones that are, they're, they don't have much time to live. Well, many of them. The fact they'd say was, thank you for coming and seeing me. Not just having conversation. A lot of times it was just sitting and holding a hand. It was the fact that they felt they still had worth. They still had value. They still had dignity, even though they may be dying on their deathbed or so broken up it'll take a long time to recover. But they saw, realized that they were seen. What a powerful thing it is to be seen. And that is what our Lord is doing every minute of every day with each and every one of us. He has seen us. And if you can sit with that in the times of joy, and if you can sit with that in the times of great trial, you will find peace. Because you'll see your being seen. And with that, you're going to be able to say, I'm okay. I'm really not alone in this. My companion is right here. His eye, his watchful eye is on me. So in our gospel today, Jesus is saying, I see you. My watchful eye is upon you. My eye that has been watching you since the day you were conceived. In fact, I knew your name before that. It's upon you. And this day I say, stand up. And she stood erect. But those who are not willing to see, those who cloud the eye of their noose, that part of their soul which has that connection with God, their hearts will just be harder and harder because they will try to cut themselves off from that vision. Cut themselves off from that life. The Gospels is about Jesus coming and telling each and every one of us, I know you by name, I call you by name, and I see you. And you have worth and value in my sight. And I give you my life because of that fact. So as we go out these walls tonight, and the people that you come in contact with, make sure, even if it's somebody at the grocery store, make sure you let them know through your body language even, if that's all you do, that you see them. That you value them as a human being. You value them as having meaning and purpose in life. Now you're acting Christ who walked among the people. And not only were they able to gaze upon him, but they were able to see his eyes looking at them. And they experienced that healing power of love. So let others know that the love that resides in your heart, in your views, is looking at them and saying, I see you. I see your beauty, your value, and your worth because you are created and loved by God. And by that very fact, I love you. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Let us all say with our whole soul, with our own mind, let us say, Oh, Lord, have mercy. O oh, Lord, Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Francis, Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God, let me be 
Bishop Kirk, for those who serve and have served in his holy church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. And for all Christians of that true faith. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You are a merciful and loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Accept also the prayer of the sinners. Bring us to your holy altar. Enable us to offer you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and other people's failings. Make this worthy to find favor in your sight that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you. And that the good spirit of grace may rest on us on these gifts here present and all your people. Grant this the mercy of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed. If you have with your all holy and white creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Thousands of angels, 
cherubim and seraphim, six winged many eyes aloft on their wings, singing, shouting, crying loud, and saying, The triumph of him. Oh.
first of all, remember our Holy Father Francis, Pope of Rome, our most reverend metropolitan way of our God, loving Bishop Kurt. Preserve them for all the churches and peace, safety, honor, help for many years, as if they been by the word of your truth. And remember all your people. Oh, Lord, the city which we dwell in, every city and community, and the faithful living in them. Remember, O oh Lord, those who travel by sea, air and land, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and grant them salvation. Remember, O oh Lord, those who bring offerings that perform good deeds in your churches, and those who remember the poor, and upon all of us send down your mercies. And grant that with one voice, one heart, we may glorify and praise your most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. The mercies of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. Thank you. 
keep thee, each them forever. We may live according to your 
divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life created in all the mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord have mercy. We thank you, O Master, benefactor of our souls, who love us all, that this day will made us worthy of our blood of mortal mysteries. Through the prayers and intercession of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary of all your saints, may straight our path and firm and solemn fear of you, God Almighty, and save God our steps. For you are a sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Second, Emmanuel 11, so we'll have Vespers and the second Emmanuel 11 this coming Wednesday evening beginning at 6.30. So hopefully you can join us as we prepare ourselves to, to meet the newborn child in a cave. Our preparation, you know, that's a big part of it. I keep, yeah, think about all the, the sporting, the things that are going on around us, and you know, football's in full swing right now. And all the preparation they have to do before a game. Not only the physical preparation, the weight room, and then, you know, out on the field, but all the hours they spend watching films for a silly game. It's not going to change the, the end game of my life one iota, whether somebody wins or loses. No effect. But yet, look at how much time we put into it. I know people that themselves, even though they're not on the field, are analyzing things before the next game. I'm thinking, my goodness. I'm not making fun. I know some people are, you know, you go to Pittsburgh, you have to be, I have to be very careful out there. <laughs> because, as one priest told me, my first Sunday preaching there, um, it was during football season, and everyone had their jerseys on, which meant the Steelers were playing. He says, Father, you took your life in your own hands there. <laughs> so I was like, okay. But anyway, you know what I'm trying to say? Is, we have something greater here. Something of far more value and worth here. Something that has everlasting effect in our lives, has an eternal aspect. Shouldn't we put a little preparation into that? I mean, God didn't call all of us here to a monster. He called, maybe there might be a few young ones here, men and women here. But the rest were called to live it in this world where we have to, to, to take Christ out into the world and prepare ourselves in the midst of it all. So I think to ourselves, you know, we who are we're duking it out in the world, God's going to bless us too. Because he goes, I know you where I didn't call you. I did not call you, Father Michael, to live in a monastery. I called you to be out in the world with the others. But I'm going to remember that. So I won't be as harsh on you as I will on somebody who's supposed to spend 24-7 in deep prayer. So it gives me some comfort. But then nonetheless, we should be preparing ourselves. 
We are a people who celebrate the divine liturgy. That's what we do. And everything we do is meant to prepare ourselves to celebrate that mystery, to have that encounter with the risen Lord, have that encounter with Jesus of Nazareth. Let us prepare just a little bit for that. Just take a little time for, for ourselves and our relationship with God. I don't think that's taking asking too much. So prepare yourselves. Maybe you can't drive in from Olympia uh, up, up in Mount Vernon and come down for, for a service, but you know, maybe you can find some other way to prepare. You know, the, uh, the preparing with the readings that, that are laid out in the booklet uh, for, for the uh, Philippos fast and those readings there. But we should do a little something. A little something more than just our everyday stuff. Just a thought. I'm just, just throwing it out there. What you do with it, I can't control it. Anyway, but we're in this together, so the holier you get, this is selfish, the holier you get, <laughs> the holier I become too, because I will strive to live up to your level. So, so grow, my lambs, grow. <laughs> glory to you, Christ, God, our own glory to you. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Now. most dear mother of the holy glorious and illustrious apostles of our holy father john chrysostom archbishop of constantinople patron of this church and do the prayers of all the saints for christ is good and loves us all Gabriel cried out to you, 
we join his son, virgin, full love of grace. The Lord of all became incarnate of you, as the righteous David had foretold. In bearing your creator, you have shown yourself to surpass the vastness of the earth. He therefore cry out, glory to him who dwelt in you. Glory to him who came forth from you. Glory to him who has set us free through your life-giving birth. On a Sabbath day, Jesus went his way, teaching in a synagogue. There a woman bent, 18 years had spent, meeting Christ in evil song. Take the truth as fell for you, just as your blessed faith true. Faith as mighty shield, won't the evil yield, gospel zeal as sturdy truth. Take the truth as felt for you, justice as your breastplate true. Faith as mighty shield, won't the evil yield, gospel zeal as sturdy Seeing her distress, Jesus called and fled, from your illness you are free. Standing straight again in the sight of men, she rejoiced in God indeed. Take the truth and fell for you, justice as your breastplate through. Faith as mighty shield, won't to evil yield, gospel zeal as sturdy shoe. Take the truth as fell for you, justice as your breastplate through. Faith as mighty shield, won't to evil yield, gospel zeal as sturdy shoe. When the headman saw works against the law, he rebuked the proud and said, Work as six days left, Sabbath is for rest, come those days for yours instead. Take the truth as fell for you, justice as your rest laid through. Faith as mighty shield, want to be both you, gospel zeal as sturdy shoe. May the truth as fell for you, justice as your breast lay through. Faith as mighty shield, want to be both you, gospel zeal as sturdy shoe. Christ said in reply, hypocrites or I cannot see the justice here. Ox and that you be, one who should be free, is deserving more I fear. Take the truth as fell for you, justice as your breastplate through. Faith as mighty shield, walk to evil yield. Gospel zeal as sturdy shoe. Take the truth as fell for you, justice as your breastplate through. Faith as mighty shield, won't do evil yield. Gospel zeal as sturdy shoe. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. Glory to you, O God. Lord my God, I thank you, for you have not rejected me a sinner, but have made me worthy to be a partaker of your holy mystery. I thank you for allowing me, unworthy as I am, to be a partaker of your most pure and heavenly gift. O Lord, who love us all, who died and rose for our sake, you have given us these awesome and life-creating mysteries for the benefit and sanctification of our souls and bodies. Grant that they may bring about the healing of my soul and body, the defeat of every enemy, the enlightenment of the eyes of my heart. 
calming of my thoughts and emotions. It's a faith that cannot be confounded. A love that does not pretend, a wisdom that overflows, a full observance of your commandments, the increase of the divine grace, and citizenship in your kingdom, being preserved in your holiness by them. I will remember your love in all times. I will live no longer for myself, but for you, my Lord and benefactor. Thus, having spent my earthly life in the hope of life without end, I will attain eternal rest for the sound of rejoicing never ceases. Where the delight of those who gaze upon the beauty of your face cannot be expressed. For you, Christ our God, are a true desire and the inexpressible joy of those who love you. All creation glorifies you forever. Amen. Most holy lady, Theotokos, light of my darkened soul, my hope, my protection, my refuge, my comfort, and my joy. I thank you for enabling me on as I am to be a partaker of the most pure body and precious blood of your Son. You gave birth to the true light, light in the eyes of my heart. You bore the source of immortality, and give life to me when dead in sin. O compassionate and loving mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me. Grant me compunction and contrition of heart, humility of mind and the recollection of my scattered thoughts. Make me worthy even until my last breath. To receive the most pure and sanctified mysteries without condemnation for the healing of my soul and body. Give me years of repentance and confession that I may praise and glorify you all the days of my life. For you are blessed and glorified forever and all. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, may your holy body bring me everlasting life. May your precious blood remit my sins. May this Eucharist give me joy, health, and happiness. At your dread second coming, grant that I, a sinner, may stand at the right side of your glory. For the prayers of your most dear mother and all the saints. Amen. Alleluia.